Hey there everybody, and today I'm going to show you a really amazing way to get your Windows programs to work on your Mac without having to virtualize a Windows machine, which means number one, you're saving money because you don't have to buy a copy of Windows. Number two, you're saving time because you can launch them while you're in OS X and you don't have to boot out to go into boot camp. You don't have to wait for uh, VMware or VirtualBox to start up. You can just boom, just go right to it. So, um, there isn't really much else to explain. The way that I'm doing this is through a program called Wine, which is well known in the Linux community for uh, virtualizing, well not really, uh, I don't know how you would say it, but it runs Windows programs because it has the Windows framework and all that, and it's actually legal too. And you don't have to pay for it at all. It's completely free. So, um, some people have made it so that it's available on Mac OS X, and this person here, um, I don't know his name. It looks like it might be David David Baumgold. Yeah, that's it. Anyway, he created this amazing, amazing guide, which I followed yesterday, and I installed Wine on my Mac Mini, and only took about an hour. Most of that time was just downloading Wine, and it works like amazingly. Now one thing though, it does not have a graphical user interface, so everything that you do it has to go through terminal. So I'd recommend that you know a little bit about uh about command line uh oh command line commands I guess. And he actually has a link in here how to use the command line. And it just takes you to another guide that he made that gives you some different things that really help you out. So to get to this page, you go to www.gavinroscamp.com slash wine, and that will redirect you to his website, and it will re redirect you to his page on installing wine on Mac OS X. Um, the link for this is down below in the description, so you just click it, and you can follow along with me. So first it says, what is wine? It tells you what it is. Will the program work with wine? It might or might not. It has an app DB app database you can just click on that and see if your app is in there it might not be in there it might be in there I don't know so requirements you will need an Intel Mac any new Mac has Intel processor if you're not sure go up to the Apple menu go to about this Mac and look for under processor Intel if you see Intel you're good to go next you will need access to an admin account with a password so uh, this is normal for installing stuff Apple X code it will be on your OS X installation DVD or you can get it from the Apple website. It's free but you need to download it. You need to get a, an Apple developer account first which if you go back to my last... no wait I didn't post that yet. Okay. Um, well I'm making a video here soon about the iPad and iPhone OS uh, SDK that you can download. Um, I'm pretty sure that he'll be able to... oh he doesn't walk you through it but all you have to do is go here, sign in with your normal iTunes account, and then tell it that you want to be a developer. And it should be free, so just go ahead with that. So then, next is X11. It's installed by default on Snow Leopard and Leopard. If you're running Tiger, uh, you can go to Tiger Installation DVD and use the optional installs. Um, also, this works on Tiger, Leopard, and Snow Leopard. Nothing else. So don't try it if you have, like, Panther. Next, you'll need an internet connection, which, if you're reading this tutorial or watching this video or in the modern world, you should be fine in about an hour, which is what I said, and most of it, you don't even have to be there. So part one, you need to install Mac ports. So just go to the Download and Installation page, and it will have links here for Snow Leopard, Leopard, and Tiger. So since I have Snow Leopard, I'll just click on Snow Leopard, and it will download it real quick. And once it gets done, you just double click on the... Oh, you don't even have to double click. It will automatically start installing it. I already have it installed, but uh, just do that. 
And then, after you get done with that, you go back to the tutorial, or the guide, and then you go to configure Mac ports. Now you need to open up your terminal, which can be found under applications and then under utilities. Um, you need to just copy this whole line. Don't copy the dollar sign, just start at echo. Copy the whole thing and then go over to terminal and paste it and hit enter. I've already done this so again I'm not going to be able to show you this. Anyway, you do that for that and it'll ask you for a password. You just type in the password. It won't show it. Just type it in. And then it should respond with these next two lines here. Um, next, if you're running Snow Leopard, you have to uh, copy and paste this one into, into terminal and hit enter and it will do some more stuff and if you entered it right it should respond with plus universal if you're running leopard or tiger you don't need to do that so now you need to close and reopen or you can quit and reopen I just quit because I think it's better um, so we have a fresh terminal here next you need to install wine and all you have to do is in terminal type sudo port install wine dash devel that's not a one that's an L I made that same mistake um, this will take forever so this is where you can go up and like go do something else get work done anything else um, it should go absolutely fine it'll just tell you a whole bunch of stuff um, mine took forever yours will probably take forever too and then after you get done with that you are pretty much ready to go so now you need to get a program okay so you put your CD in I just now put mine in and it'll take a little bit but you open up terminal you type in CD space dot dot CD space dot dot and this will take you back to like your Macintosh HD and then actually you can just type LS to list it and you see that you have one called volumes this is where it like stores shortcuts to all of your drives and stuff so you'd go cd space volumes and then you can go ls again you see all of your volumes and there's the one that's the cd so i just type in cd space paintball then i can list the contents of this and what you need to do is look for like auto run exe or setup exe or start exe this one has auto run, so I'm going to type in wine space auto run dot exe, hit enter. And once you hit enter, wait a little bit and you'll have this little X11 thing come up here. Then you wait a little bit longer and you will see the auto run program like you would on a PC. I've already installed this, but you just install it, install it just like normal, and then you can play it from here. However, I'm going to show you the way to get to the actual files. Let me just check the time here. I'm going to have to cut this into two, so um, see the next video for the uh, how to run stuff, okay? So I'll see you in a bit.